This is a review of The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug Chronicles, Cloaks and Daggers, which is the fourth book in this Hobbit Chronicles series and certainly my personal favourite, although that's not really saying much as I think all of them are fantastic, but to me this is the one that has everything that makes this a great series on display. So each of the six Hobbit Chronicles books focuses on one of the three Hobbit movies, um, with the exception of this book. This one actually is equally focused on An Unexpected Journey and The Desolation of Smaug. So despite the fact that this book has the subtitle, The Desolation of Smaug, as we go through this first half, you'll see um, Hobbit and, and Rivendell, even though they're not in Desolation of Smaug. And really, that doesn't matter, but I just thought it was worth pointing out since it's the only book in the series that focuses on two movies. In the review I did for the second book, which was subtitled Creatures and Characters, I mentioned that as a making of book, the focus was really on the physical craft and artistry of what you see on screen. Well, this book really um, continues that and cements it in a really strong and great way. The book is pretty much exclusively focusing on uh, costumes, including armor and weapons, and then also set dressing and props, and basically nothing else in terms of the filmmaking process. And this is fantastic. And that shows the real advantage of having this series split up into six books, because that's like collectively one and a half thousand pages of art and making of. So with a regular movie that might have an art and making of book, something like set dressing or even costumes might get between, you know, two and six pages. And so there's just simply not enough space to go into any sort of detail. And that's the main thing I criticize with any art and making of book is there's not enough depth, there's not enough insight, blah, blah, blah. And that really is just due to the fact that they have to cover an entire movie and its production and art and pictures in, you know, a, a 200 page book. There's only so much you can do. So when you have a series like this and a book like this, where you're getting, you know, 200 plus pages that is just focusing on costumes and props, the amount of detail and insight and commentary you can get is unlike anything else you'll find. Like, even if you're someone who doesn't really like The Hobbit, but you are, say, you know, if you're like a textiles or costume design student and you're interested in that sort of thing and how costumes are made for movies, then this would be a great resource just to learn and understand the, the level of detail and richness that goes into making these things. Having said that, um, I don't mean to suggest this is any way some sort of, like, textbook that actually tells you how to do these things. It's more like what we did rather than how we did it, if that makes sense. And there's just so much effort put into all the details that we as audience members can never sort of um, fully appreciate, but it's there. It was created. It was, you know, a conscious thought from an artisan to say, how can we make this world more real? And I mean, it is kind of funny or maybe sad that um, the movie doesn't perhaps live up to all this work, but I still think it's fantastic that people are doing this stuff anyway, and that we get these books as sort of a record of that. And I was learning a ton of stuff from this book, even if that's something like, you know, a whole two-page spread on dyeing fabric. That may not sound very interesting, but it is, because they have people on these movies who are just dedicated, you know, for weeks and months, all they do is dye fabric because um, I forget if it's something ridiculous like 90% or even maybe like 100% of the um, fabric they buy on the film, they then dye and recolor, which seems kind of crazy because I just think like if I were um, having to buy fabric for costume, like ch choosing a piece that was in the color I wanted would be sort of like one of the main things, but that's just sort of like the the level of, of detail and thought that goes into it, that they're trying to, you know, source the right fabric, um, and then they have to color it, you know, exactly how they want it, and then they'll um, laser cut a, a pattern into it, and it's just this level of work and detail, craft, that you're not really aware of because no other making of books are given this amount of space to go into this amount of detail. And related to that, because this book, like all the others in the series, are direct quotes from the people who work on these movies, you're getting to read about the craft and the making of the movie from the perspective of some people you would never hear from in regular books. These books do a really great job of balancing 
commentary from the department heads, like the costume designer or production designer, but then also balancing that with, you know, a lot of stuff from the people who are really in the trenches, you know, getting their hands dirty making this stuff. In fact, so far in this series, there hasn't been a single quote from Peter Jackson or Fran Walsh, Philippa Boyens, and I really think that's fine because, you know, they do tons of interviews in magazines or in other books. They've got commentary tracks on the DVDs, and though the cast are occasionally given some commentary, it is significantly less than pretty much any other making of book I've ever read. Some people may not like that because I know, you know, the celebrities and casts are sort of the most interesting part to some people but for me i found this really refreshing to get some insight from pe the sort of people we don't usually get to hear from in these things and i love that it just focuses on those physical crafts rather than you know there's nothing on the music in here there's nothing on sort of like the digital computer generation side i mean there's you know two pages on like um how they recreate the costumes for the digital doubles but you know that's it and the thing that this book does better than any of the others in the series is i mentioned in the second book creatures and characters that my main criticism for this series is that they used way too many stills from the movie but this one is fantastic it has almost no stills from the movie everything is either behind the scenes photography or really really fantastic um, close-up photography of the props and the costumes but unfortunately the next making of book in this series the sixth and final one they did revert back to using tons of stills from the movie which was a bit disappointing but i really like that this one didn't do that so that then you can sort of compare it to uh, the other two making of books in the series and really say okay visually it does make such a huge difference when the book is sort of exclusively great unique behind the scenes photography and this book is visually much stronger for it.